Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. Today we're going to look at the Accounts Receivable role and using M365 tools to make your jobs easier. We're going to look at using Planner, Tasks in Microsoft To Do, H Trial Balance with Power BI, Power BI Mobile, and Outlook and Email Templates. Let's get started. As an Accounts Receivable clerk, organizing and maintaining a task list is important. Today we're going to look at using Planner. What is Planner? That is part of Office 365. We're going to look at setting up and assigning tasks and different views of tasks. Let's get started. So I've signed into Office 365. You'll notice one of the apps is called Planner that it's available to me here. This allows me to create plans, organize and assign tasks and share files and get progress updates. So I've launched a Planner here. I've created a simple plan, called it AR Collections Month End. So in this plan, I have month end tasks related to an AR clerk, such as run AR aging process. I've created one task already, and I can easily add another task by clicking this button. Then another task you may have as part of the month end process may be um, send out collection letters, as an example. So as part of this, I can also assign a due date. So let's set this for April 2nd, and I can assign it to a particular individual within my organization. And at this point, I've now created the task, send a collection letter. The other thing I can do uh, with this is I can assign a priority list uh, to the task I can change the due date. I can change what bucket it's assigned to. And we'll talk about buckets in a second. I can also put uh, notes associated with this task or create a uh, sub checklist associated with the task or attach files or even add comments um, associated with the task. So let's go back and look at one I created here for run AR aging process. You'll notice that I added a note. I also checked off this box that says show on the card. So that's visible on the uh, card. This is, uh, and I've also added a comment. Process takes 10 minutes to run as an example. The other thing you can do with a um, planner bo board is this is a Kanban view of the board. Um, as you can see, I've created different agent buckets. So I could easily add a another different bucket here and I can move tasks around uh, from one bucket to another. Next, we're going to look at uh, views that are available uh, within the planner uh, product. So as I indicated, we can look at different views. So right now we're group, grouping things by bucket, but I could uh, also change it and look at things that are assigned to me by other people or to assign to different individuals within this board. You can see, switch this and look at different progress. So, you know, not started in progress completed. I could look at things by due date. I also can assign labels uh, to things and I'll show you that in a second or different priorities. So let's go back to bucket here. Let's go back to one of these and I can assign a label and we can say this is red as an example just a different way of categorizing the different tasks that may be um, outstanding. I also can um, look at a chart view so I can see how many tasks are outstanding, which bucket things fall into, who they're assigned. I can also switch to a schedule and actually look at a calendar with different tasks on that calendar. So different ways I can definitely see um, tasks uh, that are assigned um, to different individuals or related to um, particular task. So this is AR Collections month end. I can easily have another planner uh, board that um, called something else. I could also create as many tasks as I want, move them around and complete the tasks as they're done. I could mark them off. They come off here. And as you can see, they're now it's now showing in completed uh, status. So as you can see, planner is a very light uh, weight planning uh, tool. Uh, with a lot of uh, obviously feature, feature rich as well. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Planner and how you can use it in an organization, please contact Profit by visiting us at www.profit.ca. Do you find yourself 
keeping a paper notepad next to you with a to-do list? Why not switch to a electronic to-do list using Microsoft To-Do? Today we're going to look at using Microsoft To-Do, flagging emails and having them show up in Microsoft To-Do and viewing a to-do list within Teams. Let's get started. Another product that's available in the Microsoft family is the to-do application. So if I go to office.com and go to to-do, which I've launched, this is what the application looks like. So it's basically a list of all my outstanding tasks from be it Planner or Microsoft To-Do or um, Exchange, which I'll show you in a second here. So as you can see, this is showing tasks that have come in for, from Planner. Um, these are tasks that are assigned to me from, it could be from Planner or other um, applications that have been assigned to me. And here's flagged emails, which we'll talk about in a second. So here's just basically a list of all tasks. I can even create a new list. Um, so for example, um, we can call this AR Collections. And that is a new list and I can start creating tasks just like a paper-based task list. Um, so call customers, enter. And as you can see, as I finish these off, I can you know put a check box that says I've completed those. I can even change a theme associated with the list. I can rename the list. I can print a list or I delete a list as well, all within here. So let's look at what this looks like from Microsoft um, Outlook. So I have Outlook um, launched here and I can easily flag a particular email. Once an email is flagged, you'll notice if I switch back to do, to do here and I look at flagged emails, those emails that are flagged do show up as tasks within um, my list. So I can manage um, from an email associate those with a task and then assign it uh, to myself. Something else we can do is go to my day. I can see suggestions of tasks that seem important, recently, recently added tasks. I can also um, tag certain tasks as important. So if I go to plan task and I was to set one of these um, as a important task. I can now go to important and as you can see that what I just tagged is showing up in this list. Something else we can do is from a particular on a particular task is um, we can open up a task and I can say open in teams. Once I've done that um, I'll just switch over to teams here. It actually launches this tasks um, um, by planner and to do. So what this is, is bringing in tasks that may be in Planner and in Microsoft to do all within one view. And I can manage this all within Teams. So I can, just, instead of working in each one of these individual products, I can service this information right within Microsoft Teams. I can complete a task or I can change, you know, the, the priority, the progress, the due date. I can move a task uh, around. So a lot of different options um, that I have available to me uh, within Planner or Task by Planner and To-Do. If you'd like to learn more about working with Microsoft To-Do, please contact us here at Profit by visiting us at www.profit.ca. Thank you. You work in accounts receivable and you want to see your age customer balance without actually having to log into your ERP system. With Power BI, you can connect to your data and create dashboards that you will give you access to a variety of visuals, which you can view from Power BI, the web, or a mobile device. My data source is going to be a SQL Server database where I store my Dynamics GP. Over in Power BI, you can see I have two pages. I've added a pie chart to show my aged balances. A card shows my total balances. I have a multi-column card here showing aged balances by customer. On the second page, I have a Q&A box here where you can ask questions of your data. You can ask for customer balance. Let's say you want it by state, you can do that. And you can even add by map. It'll show you a map of your data. Now if I go back in here and I click on the add a page, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add a visual. Over here, I'll just choose a pie chart. 
and this one that's selected, I'll go to my data, and I just start choosing current balance, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, and so on, and you'll see my data starts coming on to my chart like that. After adding everything to the dashboard, you can customize the view for a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, making it device agnostic. I'll click over here, and I can click mobile layout, and you'll see a mobile phone layout here. I have two of them on here, I left one off because it'd be too big. Uh, second page, you'll see I have my Q&A box. Click out of there, go back to home, and at this point, you'd be ready to publish. Over on my browser, you can see it's pretty much the same as it was on the Power BI. There's my three visuals. I'll click on the second page, and there's my Q&A box. Now, if I go over to my mobile phone, I'll click on Power BI, and I'll open up my report. And there you can see that's page one with two visuals. And I'll go to page two, and you can see my Q&A box. If you want, you can click on the top here where it says Add Shortcut. Click Add, and click Add again. I'll minimize everything. And it's added a shortcut to my report. If you'd like to learn more about the power of Power BI, contact us at Profit Business Group at www.profit.ca. That's www.profet.ca. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you want more content like this. No one likes to type this exact same email message multiple times in a month or month after month. There are better ways we can be using our time. Today, we're gonna to look at Outlook templates. We're gonna look at creating a template and how to use that template in an Outlook message. Let's get started. So I'm logged into the Outlook uh, web client and I'm in my inbox here and I'm just gonna choose a particular message. Doesn't really matter which one. I'll go to the reply um, option and if I click on the three ellipses here, I can now go to my templates. This now allows me to get to the templates I have created so far, so I can easily add a new template. When I do that, I'll give it a title. It doesn't really matter what it is, and then give it a message um, that I want to show up in my template. I've already done that with the collection letter as an example. And I basically gave it a title. I basically have some verbiage in here, please send. Um, I have a typo, so I'm going to fix that. The outstanding balance of X, and uh, and I, I'm using X as a placeholder, and I'm just going to hit save at this point. I can now um, use that collection letter um, within my message. So as you can see, I just clicked on that template that I wanted to use. And now I can just go to the placeholder, and I'm just typing part of the message versus the entire message. So as you can see, this is a very powerful feature can have an entire template created or multiple different types of templates for different purposes and then just use those templates replace a little bit of text and then I can actually go out and send that particular template um, to whoever I'm sending the particular email to so let's click on another email it doesn't matter which one I particular choose here I'm just gonna hit reply again and in this particular case, I'm going to open up uh, my templates again, and I'm just going to say I'll reply later, um, or I'm running late. As you can see, I clicked and it didn't uh, particularly go, didn't go in right away. So and then I'm just hitting send uh, on that particular email. So if you'd like to learn more about using um, Office templates, please contact us at Profit by visiting us at www.profit.ca. Thank you.